Hey, it's Lacey Broussard, and this is the Multi-Orgasmic Mama podcast. From sex and motherhood, birth and relationships, communication and intimacy building, and Taoism and Tantra, we explore topics such as self-care, self-pleasure, body image, jade eggs, the feminine cycles, creativity and business, and modern spirituality. The Multi-Orgasmic Mama is a place to come for true stories and transformational advice on how to be a mama and a multi-orgasmic woman too. Hey mamas, it's Lacey Broussard here and today I want to talk to you about mom guilt. Recently I have had mom guilt galore come up (laughs) and although I'm not quite ready to talk about the reasoning for my recent divorce publicly, but it is without question that not only did my kids and myself, you know, lose our family, but we lost our home too due to things that honestly were not in my control at all. And not only did those things happen, but a voluntary move closer to my hometown happened as well, which meant that my kids would have to change schools from a school that we totally loved and cherished deeply. And it also meant that on some level, my kids would lose the solid friendships that they developed over the past six or seven years. Talk about some serious reformation and potentially tragic circumstances to have to deal with all in like five months timing. Needless to say, I have felt guilty about the move ever since I decided to do it. Even though I knew that it would be necessary for me professionally, what I struggled with the most was whether following what I knew would be right for me would actually be right for my kids too. And I am willing to bet that at some point in your mothering journey, you have come across this as well. I mean, we had already gone through so much transition with the divorce and losing our home. And then I came in and voluntarily moved us to a bigger city, two hours away from my kids' best friends and closest cousins. Yeah, I totally struggled with mom guilt galore. (laughs) So today I wanted to show you how I've dealt with mom guilt for following what I knew was right for me, even though I wasn't sure if it was the right thing for my kids and how I came to trust that doing what was right for me would actually be the best thing for my kids in the long run too, even though I had like no physical proof that that could, that that would be so. So today I'm going to share with you my three-step process that can be done with actually any emotion to form a new and empowering relationship to the emotion. The first step to dealing with any emotion really, but for this example, we're going to use mom guilt, right? Is to identify the emotion and where you feel it inside of your body. What emotion arises in you in relation to having your goal and where do you feel this in your body? For this example of feeling mom guilt around following my desires and what I knew was best for me, I feel guilty for doing so and I feel this guilt in my gut. Okay, so you really want to get clear on the emotion coming up for you, mainly because people tend to struggle with feeling core emotions, especially the culturally coded negative emotions. But the truth is emotions are just energies and you can repair and create a new and empowering relationship to any emotion by doing this three step process. And once you begin gaining emotional maturity, you can start using any emotion as fuel and power to create whatever you want in your life. But first, you have to repair your relationship with the emotions and create an empowering connection with it instead. The second step then is to embody the emotion and begin a dialogue with it. You want to ask the emotion, what do you want or need and what is your purpose? So let's take this example. Okay, now I'm embodying the guilt and my gut and speaking as this guilt, okay? And speaking as this guilt, I need to know that if Lacey follows her desires and does what's best for her, that her kids won't suffer. And my purpose is to protect Lacey, to really check in with herself and get super clear about what she really desires for her life in the first place. And I keep her from bouncing back and forth on what she wants so she can get clear and super focused on the one thing she desires most. And I also make sure that anything she really wants is grounded in truth and in love and for the highest good of all. 
because I don't let Lacey make decisions that aren't in complete alignment with her North Star. Okay, so that was the guilt speaking. And now that we have clarity around what the guilt wants and needs and its purpose, then we can move on to the second, to the third step, which is to ask yourself what relationship to this emotion would be the most supportive to you in achieving your goal. Now for this example, I now see that my guilt is actually helping me to decide what is right and what's really in alignment and with the highest consciousness and deepest love for all, which can obviously only be for the good of my kids too, right? <laughs> now I see that this guilt is here to slow me down and to really evaluate what it is I really want. And I see that this guilt is actually serving me and that I can initiate a new relationship with this guilt now that I know that it's serving me and I can actually have appreciation and gratitude for it and I can totally accept it and I can actually even love this guilt. So now instead of being at war with the guilt and wishing that it just weren't there and that I could just follow what I knew was best for me and just trust that it was for the best of my kids even though I didn't know, now I can look at this guilt in a completely new way. So you're looking to form an empowering relationship with this guilt so it doesn't feel like it's blocking you from actually having what you want. Instead, you want to be able to relate to the emotion in a way that you can pursue your goal without it getting in the way. All right, so let's recap. So the next time you've experienced mom guilt, take 10 minutes to yourself to go through this three-step process. The first step is to identify the emotion and where the emotion is inside of your body. And then the second step is to embody this emotion and this part of the body and ask it what it wants or needs and what its purpose is. And the third step is to initiate a new way of relating to this emotion, whether you come to accept it or to have appreciation or gratitude for it, or whether you can actually love it, anything like that. You want to form a new way of relating to it. So try this out and let me know how it goes. Are you loving this content? Then be sure to sign up for weekly updates and learn my secrets to multi-orgasmic bliss at www.themultiorgasmicmama.com. And I'll see you next week. Bye.